Hello everyone. In this lecture, we'll be lear learning about pass transistors and uh, tri-state buffers. Before we move to transmission gates, let uh, let us uh, let us look at our CMOS circuits once again. We know CMOS circuits are composed of two parts. One is called uh, the pull-up network, composed of PMOS, and other is pull-down network, composed of NMOS. We have already learned that NMOS will always be in the pull down network and never be in the pull up network and PMOS will always be in the pull up network and never be in the pull down network but what we haven't learned is why is PMOS not available uh, why is PMOS not used in pull down network why is NMOS not used in uh, pull up networks that is because uh, in a circuit the highest voltage is VDD which we considered as logic 1 and the lowest voltage is ground which we consider as level C logic 0 now let we let us suppose for example we did is 5 volts now if we get uh, 4.5 volts in output as uh, also we consider it one but that is a weak one or a degraded one that is not a strong one the strongest one is 5 volts that is the voltage of vdd now in case of nmos you can see that if it was a part of a pull up network its drain would have to be connected to the vdd so if it was connected to a VDD for this NMOS to remain operational that is remain in its on state the voltage of the source will have to be VDD minus VTH. So the voltage of source will always be lower than the VDD that is it will never pass entire VDD it will pass a small uh, it, uh, it will pass a voltage which is smaller than the VDD as a result it will pass degraded or weak one. But again, if we consider this part is connected to ground and we, if we want to switch that MOSFET, this MOSFET, this part is, a, is at 0 volt and this part has to be VDS minus VTH. This part has to, uh, this voltage, the point of this voltage has to be VDS minus v, VTH. But since it can be anything between this and smaller than this and not larger than this, as a result, it, we can be we can connect it to ground and it can pass zero. Uh, in in another word, in this case, uh, when we are trying to pass one through it, in this case, what happened is the the voltage of this point could be below VDD minus VTH at any level. The voltage of this point could be zero. There was no problem. The voltage of this point could not be greater than this value. That is, voltage of, of this point can never be equal to VDD. But in this case, the voltage of this point will have to be VDS minus VTH or below that. But it can be, since it can be below that, it can be zero as well. If we find zero here, it can transmit the zero to the output. No problem at all. But it, it, similar is the case in case of PMOS. In case of PMOS, when we connect VDD to it, there is no problem. But we, when we connect ground to PMOS, then the problem occurs that the voltage at this point will not be zero rather it will be vds minus vt uh, that is vsd minus vth vsd minus vth as a result the voltage of this point will be greater than zero as a result we can say that pmos can pass strong one but degraded or weak zero similarly nmos can pass strong zero but degraded or weak one so PMOS cannot be used as uh, used as a part of a pull down device and NMOS cannot be used as a part of a pull up device. They can be used but they are not very efficient. Now we are looking at uh, looking at transmission transmission gates which are formed of a PMOS and an NMOS and these gates can uh, produce degrade uh, this produce degraded outputs but it can pass both one and zero well. The pass transistors, that is the transistors used to produce degraded output, for example, NMOS produce, produce degraded 1 and PMOS produce degraded 0. But transmission gates, irrespective of everything, can pass both 1 and 0 well. So, this is the circuit of transmission gates. Let us look at it. So, let us suppose our A is the input and B is the output. Uh, now, if our G is equal to 1 and GB is equal to 0, then what uh, sorry g is equal to 1 and gb is uh, equal to 1 as uh, 0 what happens is g is 1 that means this nmos is on g 
gb is zero that means this pmos is also on total transmission gate is on now if a is equal to one this one will be passed through this pmos and if a is equal to zero this zero will be passed by the nmos as a result it can pass both zero from uh, using the nmos and one using the pmos well Tri-states, tri-states are similar to transmission gates. The tri-states contains enable option. If the enable is zero, output is floating. That is, output uh, the voltage of output is neither high nor low, neither one nor zero. If the enable pin is, uh, for example, in the truth table we can see A is input, Z is output. We are considering uh, uh, if if the enable pin is zero, the output is Z. Z means floating. If the enable pin is 1, then output is equal to input. So, this is called tri-state. That is, its output, whether its output is mapped to the input or whether its output is floating, we can control it. And we sometimes require this kind of operation. So, non-restoring tri-state transmission gates, they can work, uh, work as non-restoring tri-state using the two, two transistors. For example, uh, in the tri-state, we consider here G and here GB. But in this case, in non-restoring tri-state, we can consider this is our enable pin and this is the bar of enable pin. That is, if we put EN is equal to 1, automatically EN bar becomes 0. And as a result, EN is equal to 1 will indicate this MOSFET is on. EN bar is equal to 0 will indicate this MOSFET, that is PMAS is on. When both are on, A will be mapped to Y. If we consider EN is equal to 0 and EN bar, then EN bar will automatically be equal to 1. If the signal at this gate is 0, this trans, uh, this N must turns off. If the signal at this gate is 1, this P must turns off as well. As a result, no signal can flow from A to Y. The problem problem is that it is non-restoring, uh, that is noise from A will be passed to Y. If a signal, our signal A is noisy, our output Y will be noisy because whatever is in the input, when the gate is on or when the buffer is on, tri-state buffer is on, that will be mapped to the output. So, a noisy input will give result, uh, result into a noisy output. Now, let us look at tri-state inverters. We have learned tri-state that they can control, they can control the flow of signals. That is, they can uh, make the output uh, linked to the input or they can make the output floating. So we are considering a, let us uh, just look at a basic inverter circuit. This is our basic inverter circuit. Here we get our input. Here we get VDD ground. And from here we will get output. So as a result in this, in this circuit, if A is equal to one, O will automatically be zero. If A is equal to zero, o, output O will automatically be equal to one. So there is no enable option available. In order to use the enable option, what we will do is we can we will connect a PMOS in series with a PMOS pull, pull up network and an NMOS in series with a, with a pull down network. We can connect it to ground and PDD. Now what we do, we will still have the inverter connection. So what the inverter connection is does is both the inputs of PMOS and NMOS will be shorted and this will be A. And in these two inputs, and we'll get the output from here. In these two inputs, what we'll do is we'll connect enable pin. Here we'll connect enable bar, and here we'll connect enable. So what happens is, see, here we have bar, and here we have normal. So what will what it will do is, either both the both this transistor and this transistor will be on because if enable is equal to one, this transistor is one. It will make enable bar is equal to 0, so this transistor is also on. If enable is equal to 0, this transistor is off. Again, enable bar will turn into 1 and this transistor will be off. As a result, because of this, these two transistors and the enable pins, either both these transistors will be off or both this transistor will be on. If both the transistors are on, then we can consider these a short circuit and as a result, this circuit looks similar to this. But if both the transistor, for example, in this case, we can see that both the transistors are on and the circuit looks similar to basic inverter circuit. But if both the transistors are off, we can see the output is connected to something which is floating here. 
that is which is in no way connected to VDD again which is floating here it is in no way connected to ground as a result of which output is floating so in case of tri-state inverters uh, in this example we can see using the tri-state and uh, enable means we can actually control whether we want to pass the input to the output or we want to keep the output floating now let us look at multiplexer we have learned about multiplexers in digital electronics what multiplexer does is it contains a select input if the select input is zero it transmits whatever there is in d0 to output it maps the d0 to the output if the select input is equal to one it maps d1 to the output so if select pin is zero then output is equal to d0 if select pin is 1, output is equal to D1. And these are don't care condition. That is if select is 0, whatever the value is there in D1, it doesn't matter. If select is 1, whatever is the value in D0, it doesn't matter. It will just pass a 1. This is the basic multiplexer that we have learned in digital electronics. Now the equation of multiplexer is, uh, as we can see, Y is equal to S D1 plus S bar D0. For example, if S is equal to 0, we can see S bar will turn into 1 and this, this term will turn into 0. As a result, 1 into D0 is equal to D0, our basic Boolean arithmetic. So, we get Y is equal to D0. Again, if S is equal to 1, we will get S bar will turn into 0. So, this whole term will turn into 0, 0 into something is 0. And this term, since S is 1, S is equal to 1. So, S into D1, 1 into D1 will turn into D1, basic Boolean algebra. So, Y will be equal to D1. So, if we uh, convert into our gate level design, what happens is, the S is directly connected to an AND gate, which is connected to D1, and S is connected to an inverter over here, and is connected to another AND gate, which is connected to uh, D0. And these two are, since there is a plus in between, these two are connected to an OR gate, and we get the output. Now, we have already learned CMOS implementation of NAND, NOR and inverter. So, we, are, uh, we can convert these AND gates into NAND gates by using a NAND gate and an inverter in series. Similarly, OR gate and inverter in series will give our NOR gate. So, we can see, we have learned that in case of inverter, we need two transistors, one PMOS, one NMOS. In case of two input NAND gate, we need four transistors, two PMOS, two NMOS. In case of also NOR gate, we need 4 transistors, 2 PMOS, 2 NMOS. So, the total number of transistors required is 2 plus 4 plus 4, 10 plus 4 plus 4, 18 plus 2, 20. So, we need 20 transistors. We need 20 transistors to make a, uh, make a max if you are using gate level implementation, which is too much. So, instead of gate level implementation, we can go for CMOS. How we can go for CMOS? We can go, uh, go for CMOS in this way. The expression is SD1 plus S bar T, D0. So, we can see uh, in, in general case, this, uh, here it is inverting. That is output will give, uh, this will be Y bar. We will get Y bar over here. Or Y will be, see, this circle will indicate S d1 plus s bar d0 whole bar so we have learned how we can implement our gate cmos circuit and the and gates in case of and they are in parallel in case of uh, pull up circuit so in pull up s and d1 transistor two two pmos pmos uh, having the gate signal of s and d1 will be parallel so here s and d, d1 are parallel similarly two transistor having signal s bar and d0 will be parallel S bar and D naught are here parallel and in case of NMOS or pull down transistor the, the parallels of pull down will get series that is S and D1 will be, will be series in, in case of uh, in case of NMOS we can see S and D1 over here are in series similarly S bar and D0 over here are series so what is parallel in PMOS or the pull up network is series in pull down network and this is our CMOS circuit and this CMOS circuit, as we have learned earlier, will give us inverted output. In order to get an in actual output, we will have to use an OR gate here. And S bar is not readily available, so we need to use an OR gate to get S bar from S. So, total number of transistors required is 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here this will contain 2 transistors. Here this will contain 2 transistors. 19, 11, 12. So 12 transistors are needed. So, it, so we can see that CMOS is uh, uh, CMOS is a better option uh, than uh, logic level design. We have a, a more better option than that, that is a fast transistor logic. Sorry, transmission gate logic. In case of transmission gate, we can do this by using just four transistors. How we can do that? This is a transmission gate over here and this is a transmission of gate over here. It is connected in such a way, if S is equal to zero, we see what happens. S is equal to 0 means this turns on and it will also indicate S bar is equal to 1. S bar is equal to 1 means this NMOS also turns on. Again, S bar is equal to 1 means this PMOS has 1 at its gate, so it's off. And S is equal to 0 means this is also off. So if S is equal to 0, D0 is connected to output 5. Similarly, if S is equal to 1, S bar will automatically become 0. If that is the case, we can see that if S bar is 0, this PMOS will be on, this NMOS will be off. And again, if S is equal to 1, this PMOS will be off, this NMOS will be on. As a result, D1 will be linked to output. So, total amount of transmission, uh, uh, to total amounts of MOSFETs required is, transistors required is, in order to create S bar, we need a, uh, we need an inverter. So, here we require 2 transistors and here 2 more, 2 more. So, we, so we need 6 transistors. So we can say that uh, our transmission gate is uh, gives us a lower idea that is low cost, low cost implementation. Now we can prepare a multiplexer using transmission gates and using also the CMOS technology using two to one, one multiplexer. Uh, let us look at the working procedure. If S0, S1, if they are in 0, 0 condition, this S0 being 0 will pass D0 to output and it will also pass D, D2 to output, the same as 0. Similarly, S1 will pass this, this to the output, that is D0 to the output, so output will be D0. If the condition is 0, 1, 0 in S0 will pass D0 here and D2 here and if S1 is equal to 1, we will get D2 map to the output, so we will get D2. If get one, if we get one zero, what will happen? If S zero is equal to one, it will pass D one here and D three here. So here we have D one, here we have D three. Now, if S one is equal to zero, obviously it will pass the upper part. That is, it will pass D one. So output is D one. If we connect one one, S zero being one will create D one here and D three here. S one being one will pass this part to the output as a result d3 will be mapped to the output and we will get d3. So similarly the truth table becomes s0 s1 output 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 will give us d0 d1 d2 d3 in the output. Okay thank you so much that's all for today.